All right, we're gonna go through some mace principles today. We're just gonna start with the simple physics, some very obvious things, but important that we start with two hands on the mace and that the closer my hands are to the mace, the easier it is, the further away it's gonna get harder. So for example, if we're doing some type of row exercise, hand close, if I'm like, ah, I get a little more in there, just move your hand further away, pretty obvious, okay? The next thing is just gonna be how we describe the exercise. So if we say underhand, overhand, the first hand is the hand that's closest to the ball. If I say overhand, overhand, boom, overhand, overhand. If I say left hand, underhand, overhand, left hand at the ball, overhand with the other hand, okay? Pretty obvious, pretty intuitive, but some of the basics. Speaking of the basics, we wanna focus on isometrics first. So here's some creative ways to get some isometrics in, not just by sitting and doing PT exercises, but by getting a workout in, grabbing the mace, and then here's your first rest series. You're just gonna hold, you're gonna walk, we're gonna challenge whatever it might be, 30 seconds, building up to 45, 60 seconds of isometric holds. We have four positions. So here would be one, you're walking, here would be two, Woo, gets a little bit harder right now. And then the next isometric position is gonna be one of the harder ones. So I'll start with the hand a little bit closer. You'll start to notice it starts to look a little more demanding like I'm on my handlebars, but I have to be able to own this position, have the strength through that joint. And then the fourth one would be now the ball goes outside. So we've started with isometrics in those wrists. This could just be your rest. You're getting out there, you're doing something hard in the weight room, and then you're gonna rest and hold right here, okay? Then we're gonna to start to add into eccentrics. So start obviously with your hand pretty close to the ball. You're just gonna control for five seconds. Before you start to get crunch or pain, you're gonna hold and own the hardest position and then help it concentrically. So it's a lower for five, four, three, two, one. Most important part is that you can own that isometric part. If you can't, you just choke up a little bit more. Five second eccentric. And then we're also gonna go the other way as well, owning this position. This should not be pinchy, crunchy. You're able to, once again, own it, stop it, have the strength in these positions. So we have four position isometrics, four position eccentrics. If we want to add in a fourth one, which really starts to happen more in golf, I would suggest adding in a little bit more dynamic, eccentric control now moving the wrist like so, right? That's definitely gonna happen in the golf game as well. So you have to be able to own it isometrically and then dynamically, and then you can start adding more load. Some simple exercises to do a little bit more rehab, but intra rest. All right, where else can I use the mace? I can use it in training. It's not a very heavy load. So I like to think about using it in my warm up. So if I'm gonna warm up, I might as well get a little extra grip strength shoulder activation and one of the most important principles is also creating tension so i can just passively hold this or i can row it into my body and imagine like i'm pulling that ninja sword or samurai sword out of the sheath and now i feel my upper back and grip really tighten up so i want you to be active in these positions don't just hold rip it pull it apart get a little more isometric work put in there all right so like i said where do you do this you do this in your movement prep in your warm-up so what that might look like is I'm gonna do an RDL, underhand right, overhand. Just like I would step and throw or hit a serve, right? Same pattern, so I step with my left, throw with my right. I'm gonna reach, finish nice and tall. Reach, pull the sword out of the sheath. Now I'm getting a little bit, not just hips, but now I'm getting that upper back and grip strength as well. So there's your RDL. Reverse lunge with a twist, very classic. We're gonna go overhand, overhand. And I wanna be active, I wanna be pulling the sword out of the sheath. We're gonna twist and then finish with an uppercut. We're gonna to get to the lunge in a sec, but I just want you getting comfortable grooving this pattern. So my emblem on my exos faces one way and then it faces the other way. I check in at the top. Is my chin over the pull-up bar? Am I pulling the samurai sword out of the sheath? Okay, you've done three, four, five of those. We're gonna add in a lunge and check in at the bottom, chin over the bar, pull the samurai sword out of the sheath. Lunge with a twist. Good, we'll switch sides, overhand, overhand. Just add, rotate, towards, rotate, away. 
Really nice for T-spine. Really nice, Woo, wrong leg. Really nice for a little bit of extra grip in that warm up as I wake everything up. All right, from here, I love this one. I'm gonna throw on a mini band. Double whammy here. We're gonna get some grip, some core, some hips. That might be the triple whammy, the trifecta. So I want you to start with your hands in to your body and your feet in close. You're gonna press it out. Hands in, feet in. Hands press out, feet press out. Make it a little bit harder by choking up. I'll usually go about 10, 12 reps, a little burn plus some, and then I'll switch the grip going back. So a great way to once again, you're gonna warm up, might as well get some of that grip strength put in there. From there, another one of my favorites, this one, you got to make sure you've got to the dynamic work, but world's greatest, elbow to instep is one. Reach to the sky, and now I'm going to tap, twisting, rotating, owning a little bit more dynamic rotation through the shoulder and eventually out through the wrist. Hamstring stretch, so one, elbow to ankle, two, reach to the sky, twist it out. Maybe start small and start to get bigger, pretty advanced but you should be able to own these positions if once again, you're gonna have to be able to rotate and turn it over and golf, squash, pickleball, you name it. So there are some tips. We start with isometrics, build it into some of your rest, start to get into more dynamic movement, owning the eccentrics, owning the end range position, and then finally incorporating it into movement prep. Hit me up if you wanna see some of the actual training exercises, if you wanna level up.